First let us undock the vector scope and let's minimize the main window. Let us scale up the window a bit, yes, uh, like this. Okay. The vector scope or goniometer plots an XY view of the relationship between the left and right audio channel. The balance meter above shows the drift of the stereo track to either side. It helps to identify whether your stereo signal is well balanced. Small white brackets hold the maximum values. The correlation meter indicates the degree of similarity between the left and right channel. A moving bar shows the momentary value and the brackets hold the maximum values. The correlation meter is important to check for mono compatibility or to check if a stereo microphone position would result in phase cancellation. Petrol values are always acceptable, the yellow area is still ok, but the red area indicates that phase cancellation will take place, which in a mono playback can lead to certain frequencies being hardly or not audible compared to the stereo playback. The left audio channel drives the 45 degrees deflection of the vector scope. Let's solder the left channel. There is now only the 45 degrees angled line. The balance meter moves fully to the left and the correlation moves to the center because one signal has no correlation. Soloing the right channel only drives the minus 45 degrees deflection of the vector scope. The balance meter moves fully to the right and the correlation stays in the center. A monophonic signal consists of identical left and right signals, resulting in a vertical line. The mid signal is such a signal. Let's solo mid in the control panel. The balance indicator disappears because the mid signal is dead center. The correlation indicator moves fully to the right because two identical channels are fully correlated. A horizontal line indicates that the left and the right channels are 180 degrees out of phase. This for example is the side signal. Let's solo the side in the control panel. The balance indicator remains invisible because the side signal is monophonic but out of phase, which is shown by the correlation indicator that moves fully to the left because two channels that are out of phase are fully uncorrelated. The vector scope features linear and logarithmic views. With lin engage, the relationship between the stereo channels is displayed linearly and has a maximum shape of a rhombus. With lock engaged, the relationship is displayed logarithmically, which is a useful view for smaller signal amplitudes. It has a maximum shape of a circle. In the following music example, the audio is heavily compressed. Again, I will fade out audio for reasons of discretion. I will open the level meter as well. You see that ISPs are detected and the histogram shows the limiting spike here. In the vector scope you can see that the outer rim of the view is reached, which is always a sign of heavy limiting. The slider defines how long the vector scope signal stays on the screen. It is comparable to the luminescence of old cathode ray tubes. If the slider is at its maximum, the signal is held indefinitely. Well, that was a short one. This was part 5. The next video deals with the spectrum analyzer. See you then. Have fun and bye bye.